Hey, my name is Tim, <clears throat> and I want to show you a little bit about how quick and easy it is to get started running your ladders on the Tennis Rungs platform. So, I want to jump right in. The first thing you do after you create your account is you will get to this dashboard, um, this admin dashboard. We'll talk a little bit about the player dashboard in another video, but to set up your ladders, the first thing you want to do is click the add a ladder link um, on your dashboard. So if I click that, we'll quickly uh, create a men's singles ladder. I'm going to skip the description. You can enter that if you like. You pick the ladder type. Uh, is this a singles ladder, doubles ladder? Uh, the formula. So let me talk a minute just a little bit about the formula. So if I open this up, this will give us some sort of explanations of what these different formulas are and so our most common formula that we use to um, that most of our clients use to to run their ladders is the bump rank that's your traditional competitive ladder um, most of pro most this is really suitable for private clubs or for a set or a group of people that really want the best players to be at the top so in a bump ladder um, for example let's say Joe is ranked number 16 and he challenges Tom who's ranked number two if Joe wins then uh, Joe becomes number two Tom becomes number three and everybody else bumps down that's why the name bump rank swap swap rank is exactly what it says if uh, in the previous example if Joe's 16 and Tom's two and Joe wins then Joe actually gets the two spot and Joe goes all the way down to the 16th spot now we have very few clients using this but it is available um, but it is not highly popular and then we have the points based ladder and now this one is a really nice feature if what you're looking for is activity so this is really suitable for your municipalities your rec departments uh, intramurals it's just where people want to play tennis they want to play tennis they want to meet people so everything is there's no direct challenges involved it's really hey I want to play tennis you get to go out a player can propose and propose a match um, on a particular day at a particular location at a particular time and when they do that and they submit it anybody can come in on that ladder and accept that proposal so it's a really easy way to avoid scheduling conflicts gets people to play every day if they want to and then the ladder is ranked based on the points that are accumulated when people report score. So in a points-based ladder, um, the players, once the, the ladder is submitted, you have a set, and I'll go over this with you in a minute when I set up a points-based ladder, you set the sort of some criteria of points that are allocated for who wins the match, if you win an extra set, etc. So then everybody gets those points and then the ladder is ranked accordingly. So that's the three different ways that tennis runs rank um, ranks ladders and so uh, the other things that you'll want to do when you set up a ladder is your start date so your start date will basically say when does this ladder start so if you want to pre set up your ladder you can put the start date out in the future you can still set it up but your players won't be able to make or start making challenges until this day arrives okay allow joining is useful if you don't want to um, if, if you don't want to have to put every single person in the ladder yourself, you can turn this box on and what this is going to do is allow players that if they're not in the ladder and they're eligible to join, they can go ahead and join the ladder. And then, of course, these other two is your, is your name or your administrator's name and the email of the administrator. And then if you want to be copied on every single challenge that goes out, you can check this box and then an email will be sent to you on every challenge and that's the same as uh, a score report as well now you can always come into the platform and see the challenges and see the scores at any given time so a lot of our admins cut this off just so they don't get bombarded with um, a bunch of emails but of course that is totally up to you so now that I have this initial singles ladder bump ladder created I'm gonna go ahead and hit next um, now what's going to happen is we're going to be able to set up some additional uh, detailed preferences for this ladder. So you can actually set up ladders uh, to limit players to one total challenge. And, and if you do that, what that means is if a player is challenged, they can't issue a challenge. So 
best practices or what I like to suggest to clients is that they not check this. Um, so that way, at most, you may have um, two challenges. You can be challenged and then you can actually challenge. So uh, it just, because the reason is, is if I get challenged, then I can't make a challenge and people keep challenging me, I can't challenge anybody. So um, some people like that, but um, best practices is to not to check that box. This controls how many spots you're able to challenge up. You can set this, um, as, you know, uh, you know, our, I would say the majority of our clients set it to three. That's a good starting point, but you may, uh, you know, set it four or five or whatever your ladder rules are. Um, you may also want people to be able to do multiple challenges. So you can set this to two or even three. Um, we do uh, recommend one, but that's totally up to you. Next in line challenges is a really useful feature because that is what's going to uh, say, say that you allow two spots up and both of those players are in a challenge already. Well, you're stuck. So if you do next in line challenges, what that does is allow the next person that's available outside your range to be available. So it's a really neat feature that will allow you and your players the ability to keep the ladder moving without getting frustrated. Um, auto forfeited challenges is just a way that um, if somebody doesn't respond to a challenge after a particular time, then they can actually, um, they, that match actually gets, or the challenge gets forfeited. And then you can pick and choose whether or not that actually changes the rates. So the next thing that we want to do is talk about challenging down. So if you want to allow people to challenge down, um, so maybe number one can challenge and get a match in because if you don't have that check, the people at the top of the ladder really don't have nobody to challenge. So it's a way for them uh, to actually have a challenge button to play matches. And then you can determine how far down they can challenge. Wild cards is a really cool feature because this is a way that you can um, allow people to challenge anybody they want on the ladder. So. Um, if you turn this on, everybody will be defaulted to have one wild card, but this is also useful so that if a new player comes in, then they can get that, use that one wild card and sort of pick and choose where they think they may fit on the ladder. And then you can even say, after so many matches, you get another wild card. So that really promotes activity within your ladder so that um, people are continually having something driving them to play more matches. And then you actually have a setting where a player has to wait a particular set of days before they can rechallenge the same player. So this way, we default it to be a week. So if Bob challenges Joe um, and Joe beats him, then Bob can't come right back in and rechallenge him until he has waited his uh, seven-day wait period. Okay. And then we have some options where you can auto expire challenges and even show USTA ratings if you like. And so. Um, now we're moving into the score reporting. So the score reporting is just basically if you don't touch it, it's normal tennis rules. But if you're running a table tennis ladder or maybe a pickleball ladder, you may want to change these to allow for your scoring. And then if you're doing a junior ladder um, and you're doing pro sets, then you want to make sure that you allow one set matches so that your pro set functionality will be there. The ladder notifications is if... Um, you know, if th these are turned on so that you can send warning emails. So like four, three or four days before a match uh, is to be forfeited, um, uh, it will send an email and the same for a challenge expiration. So if two players agreed to play a challenge and the, the score hasn't been reported um, before the, 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 the date that it's going to expire, they can get a warning email. And then deterioration is a way to basically auto drop players. So you can turn this on and the ladder will automatically start stop drop or start dropping players after inactivity for a certain time period. So after 21 days, they can be dropped five and so on and so on. So it's a way to sort of move down your inactive players so they don't sort of just take spots in the ladder um, and not play. Okay, so that's all there is to adding a ladder. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is talk about um, adding players. Okay, so I'm back on the admin dashboard. I know I said I was going to add players, but I'm going to take a quick step back and follow my checklist. So I want to talk to you a minute about 
custom rules for your ladder. So I know a lot of you guys will uh, or have your own rules and I want to show you how to, how you can sort of <clears throat> get that information or get your custom rules published for your particular ladder. So if I click on edit custom rules and let me also point out this checklist will go away um, once you get everything set up but you can get to everything down here every ladder you have will be listed here and all of the actual actions you can take on your ladder are underneath the ladder name um, also when you click a particular ladder you will see a ladder admin menu with, that you can use to do sort of the same things that you can do on that previous screen so just some navigational tips here for you um, you can also see a quick menu on the right this will get you to a lot of the different settings that I will talk about here shortly and then our live support feature is you can click this it will get you so you can create a new conversation and talk to the support team you can also get to that by clicking the live support there and then you can also get to our knowledge base of articles which a lot of stuff I'm covering today is in this knowledge base so if you click this knowledge base you'll see that you can go and get to all of these different articles that I have posted so if I'm going a little quick or you want to see some written articles based on what I'm showing you you can always check out our knowledge base okay so I'm gonna jump back into the app um, and talk about custom rules so custom rules based on that previous setup um, the default rules will actually be shown here and these and these rules will be sent to your um, your your players when you add them and I'll show you that in just a second but you can always enter your own rules here so you can take this editor and you can add as much custom text rules that you want to give to your users as you like and you even have the option to cut off the default rules and only use your custom rules so you would just check this box and then when you save that any rules that are being shown or been sent would only be the rules that you have typed here okay all right so I just wanted to mention that to you first so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to custom rules I'm gonna save that um, add rules here just so I can get that checked off the list okay so if I save that and now I go back to the admin side you can see the first two things are checked now it's time to add some players okay so I'm gonna click add players once this checklist goes away mainly you'll either want to click this green button here or you can go over uh, here and add player to club or you can even manage um, your members or players here by clicking this so multiple different ways you can get but the quick add is really the easiest way to add new players so I'm gonna click that I'm gonna skip the online registrations for now I will come back to that in just a minute but to add a player it's really simple um, so if I want to add a player I'm just gonna type in his or her name We'll add Jimmy here and give him a fake email. Uh, I don't really know Jimmy Connor's email address, but um, anyway, you can give a phone number if you like. The, the the asterisk, the red asterisk, those fields are actually required, so you need to make sure that you enter those. The username can be different from the email. This is what's going to be used to log in, but email will be what we use to send emails to that person, so that way. Um, this can be shared username cannot so uh, that's you know you do not have to use an email for the user uh, uh, for the username it's just going to be the default so as long as this person's not playing at another tennis runs ladder then you can just use the username now if you try to enter a, a player's name and it says this email is already in use then what you'll want to do is just uh, you know just give another username you can say first name or first initial last name or first name uh, dot last name so just because the email is not the e it says the email username is not available it's talking about the username not the email okay so I hope that's clear okay I'll just change this back to Jimmy at test.com we'll make him I won't enter a phone number make him a 4 up now if you go down here you're gonna get two options you can go ahead and send them a welcome email I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second um, but the welcome email is going to be something that they get sent for the first time it says hey uh, I can even show you what it's gonna look like so if I preview this this is what the email is going to look like 
Uh, it's going to just welcome uh, them to the ladders. Uh, it's going to shape, you know, tell them their username, and then it's going to say, "Hey, if you want to create your initial password, then click here." Okay. So, so if I go back over to the add player, then I can also check to send the rule, the rules email as well. So there'll be two emails. One will be welcome, welcome them to the uh, tennis runs letting them set up their account and then two will be the rules that you send out for your particular ladder now obviously you don't want to send this rules email um, if you're not adding them to a ladder and you may want to do it later and you per and you certainly can and you can even do this later so if you just want to add them and not send them any emails you can just uncheck the box um, and you also can go ahead and quick add them to a ladder. So if I go ahead and, and, and select this for Jimmy, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, no, I'm gonna not select that, but I'm gonna just go ahead and add him to the men singles, and then I can go ahead and just simply click add player. Okay, and so what this is gonna do is, as you can see, it's gonna add Jimmy to my player list, uh, and then I can continue adding players until I'm done. So I'm gonna pause the video uh, just a minute, and I'm gonna go ahead and add you know five or six more players uh, to this ladder so that it's uh, a little bit more filled out and then I will be back in just a minute okay before I get back into what you can do once you have your ladders created I wanted to show you the two emails that the system will send out um, when you are adding somebody to a to your tennis runs account and then when you add somebody to the ladder so when you add somebody to uh, your tennis rooms count they're gonna get a email that says welcome to the and then whatever the name of your organization is ladders and it's going to be personalized and it's going to tell them their username and then it's gonna have a link here that will allow them to set their initial password and when they click on this uh, it'll take them to a spot where they can enter in their initial password and then they'll be able to log in the tennis room the other email is an email that is basically telling them they've been added to a particular ladder as you can see new ladder entry men singles um, it tells them that uh, tennis runs website that's uh, that's used to run ladders gives them your email uh, as the ladder admin your name and email and then it will show them all of the default rules and then any custom rules that you've added so I just wanted to mention the two emails that the that your members will get and what those look like um, when you add someone to your tennis runs account so now let's switch over let me show you some more stuff uh, regarding um, some each individual ladder okay so now I'm back on the admin screen and you can see here is my men singles ladder and if I click add add ladder rankings edit ladder rankings I'm sorry You'll see that I'm now, uh, I get to a screen that shows you all of my players that are in my ladder. A couple things I want to point out here. Um, the first thing is, um, if you need to add somebody new to your ladder, a new player, you would just click this button and you would select them and add them to the ladder. If you want to change the ranks of a player, let's say we want to make Pete Sampras the number one player on the ladder, we just select the rank and then change the rank to what you want it to be and then click the change rank button. And then you'll see Pete goes to the top. Um, the drop options, okay, that's if you want to drop someone from the ladder. So you can have, you have three options. You can remove the player completely, you can drop them to the bottom, or you can temporarily remove that player from the ladder. So if you temporarily remove them from the ladder, then when you want to put them back in, you can put them back in at the spot that they came out of. So that's for people that are going on an extended leave, people that are injured, people that need to come out but not lose their spot. So that's uh, what temporarily remove player from ladder means. Okay. Um, you can also get uh, back to your preferences or your details by just clicking, you know, edit ladder, edit ladder preferences, um, gets you back if you need to make any adjustments. If you need to make any adjustments to the rules, you can click Edit Ladder Rules, gets you right back to the uh, Ladder Rules page. Okay, so if I go back to my admin now, um, now let me show you uh, one other thing. Uh, I think that's all I want to show. Yeah, so now let me show you um, how you can add a new challenge. Now most 
really the important thing to know uh, about tennis rungs is you really want the players to issue the challenge, accept the challenges, report the scores. However, there may be times where you want to manually add a challenge into the system. Well, to do that, if you just click add new challenge under the ladder, then you will be able to go ahead and uh, make a challenge. So let's say you want, you know, you want to say Andy is going to challenge Pete. You can hit submit challenge. Override rule is if that challenge is outside your normal rule set, then it's going to block it at first. But then you can just click uh, click the override rule, and it will allow that that challenge to to go into the system and not be blocked. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And now you can see that this challenge is in the system. So it now shows Andy Roddick and I can hit view challenge and I can see that this challenge is against Pete. Okay. So now that that challenge is in there, I can actually now see when I go to open challenges, I can see that here's Andy and Pete's challenge. And if I wanted to report the score, I could click on report score, select the winner and enter the score. Again, this is something that you really want your players to do. I'm just showing you a way that you can do it from the admin side if you need to. So let me go ahead and go ahead and, 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 and say that Andy wins this challenge and let's say he wins 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and make sure Andy's the winner and submit the score. Okay. So now if we look at the uh, ladder, you can see that now Andy has jumped over Pete. Everybody else got bumped down. Um, and the records have changed uh, for those two players. You also notice now we have a link that says view matches played today. You can click on that and it will show you any matches that were played today. Now let's say that um, that match was entered by a player and the score was wrong. Uh, it was the, the wrong winner was chosen. Well, you can easily reset the match. Um, you can go back into, if you go back into your ladder, you can click on at the very top played challenges and you can see if I click on that it's going to show me uh, Andy defeated Pete and here's the score. Well, that was wrong. Um, Andy did not defeat Pete. Pete beat Andy. So you need to reset that so that the players or you can fix it. So if it was just a score change then you could just click edit score here and update the score. However, if you need to change the rankings um, back to what they were uh, then you have to reset the challenge so that the rankings can go back <clears throat> and then re-enter the score for the appropriate winner. So let me show you that. So if I click reset challenge and confirm that, what's going to happen is now the system has reset that challenge. So now if I go back to open challenges, I will see it as it exists. And then look, it put Pete back at one and Andy back at two. So if I go out and look at my ladder rankings now, I will see that Pete is back at one, Andy's back at two, and my, my, my challenge is out there existing as it was if before any scores were reported. And so that's your quick way to fix a challenge that gets messed up. Okay, I'm back on my dashboard now. Um, I wanted to show you a couple more things before I move to the player side and show you what it looks like from a player's standpoint. But I want to show you a couple more administrative things that you can do. Uh, inside tennis rungs. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you was this public page to all ladders. So this is a way for you to um, publish a link out to your website. So it'll show you like all your ladder rankings. It'll show you all the recent matches, uh, stats and everything for your particular ladder. And it's a way for you to like link your ladder information from your site. So that's found under public page to all ladders. Um, there's also a forfeit report. So you can see the breakdowns of people that are not playing. Um, you can send, you can email your ladder players. Um, you can send welcome emails. You can email the rules over here. So if I click email rules, and you want to send uh, the rules to a particular ladder, you can actually pick and choose uh, who to send that to, or you can just pick and choose everybody. Um, you also can, if you were using wildcards, 
you can update everybody to you know maybe have one wild card or zero wild cards if you want to just clear everybody out so that's a quick way for you to give more um, wild cards to somebody and then you can also reset and delete so reset your ladder actually resets all your player records back to zero and zero win loss records so the, the, the thing to keep in mind here is that if you do this, you're going to actually lose the historical records of your players, so be careful. A lot of people just reissue or recreate a new ladder and, and close off the old ladder. So you can easily, let me show that to you, you can go into your ladder details at any time and you can set an end date. So if you want to make sure that the end date um, ends on a particular day, you can set an end date and then it basically the ladder will auto close after August 31st. So at August 31st, nobody will be able to make any more challenges and your ladder can be officially closed. Um, and then there's the idle player report. This shows you pretty much um, who your players are that are not playing. It will show you, um, you know, no matches for 30 days, no matches for 14 days. So it's a really good report to see who your inactive players are and maybe you can give them a little nudge. Um, you can also print your ladder ranking. So if you want to print this off, it's in a nice, real print friendly format. So you can actually print off your ladder rankings weekly and post it in your clubhouse or um, in some area where people can see it. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you, and, and I think you're really going to find this pretty cool, is um, a way to set up an activity based ladder. So this ladder was a bump based ladder and it involved direct challenges. And I want to make sure before I get into the player side of things, I want to show you what a activity or points based ladder looks like. And I'm going to show you that from the double side because it's really cool how we do individual doubles ladders. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new ladder. I'm going to call it mixed doubles activity. Actually, I'll just leave it mixed doubles. Now I'll just say this is activity. If I could spell correctly, activity-based ladder for our mixed players, okay? And then I'm going to change the ladder type to individual doubles, okay? I'm going to leave all of this the same. I'm going to go ahead and start it today. I'm going to click next. And then I'm going to, there, there's a couple different uh, changes to the preferences for activity ladders that I want to mention. One of them is uh, this idea of proposing a match. So the really cool thing about activities ladders is that instead of directly challenging somebody, which you can still do, but most don't, is you just uh, just basically say, I want to play a match and I want to play it on this day at this time at this location. So you can actually uh, set up some settings so that prevents people from like accepting your proposals one after another. So. Um, most people leave this unchecked that way if you put out a proposal for Tuesday and then one for Wednesday the same team or person can't accept both days back to back so it allows you to play it allows your players to play different people um, um, if you have if you're in a city uh, or a municipality and you have multiple uh, tennis courts all over your your town or city you may want to specify locations um, that way somebody when they're creating a proposal can say hey this match is uh, going to be played at Davis Park or some other venue so that way when somebody's looking at that ladder proposal they know where this match is going to be played at um, and then of course you can you know if you want to show the USTA ratings um, then you get an option to do that but everything else uh, around here is the same now except for this so this is what I was talking to you earlier about when I said on an activity based ladder once those scores are posted you will get the ability to, uh, well, once the scores are posted, players get points. And the points are allocated based on your setup. And so there have, there's five factors. You get points for when you win a match, a points when you win a set. Um, um, uh, players um, get points for just playing in a match. Um, they get a point bonus point if they go to a three set match, and then they get a bonus point if they win in straight sets. And so all of these uh, can be um, changed and altered. These are sort of like what we give you as our default best practices. But obviously, if you want to tweak these, you certainly can. Okay. So I'm going to just go ahead and save uh, the creation of this ladder. And then I'm going to add some players. So I'm going to pause while I add the players to this ladder so you don't have to sit and wait for me to do that. So I'll be right back. 
Okay, as you can see here, I've went in and I've added um, all the players to this mixed doubles individual activity based ladder. Now, a couple things to point out. If you notice, everybody's ranked number one. Um, the reason for that is because everybody has zero points right now because nobody's played any matches. So in an activity ladder, remember it's not um, ranked on who be two, it's ranked upon, it's ranked by the number of points you have. And so on the admin side, if you do want to sort of set some default ranks, you can actually go in and sort of seed these points with values um, if you'd like. Um, I don't necessarily think you have to do that, but if you want to do that, you certainly can, and this is how you do it, okay? So as you can see, now everybody is in this ladder. So now what I'm going to do is I want to show you a couple things on the player side. So I'm going to go over now to what we call the player dashboard, okay? All right? So I'm logged in as me, and the cool thing about it is I can be an admin, but I've, I can also be a player. And so that way you don't have to have two separate accounts. So if you're admin and you're watching this video, you do not have to create a separate player account. Your, your admin account will serve as your player account and you'll be able to see things as the players see them on your player dashboard. So what your players are gonna see uh, when they log in is they're gonna see the player dashboard. They're gonna land on the player dashboard and only the player dashboard, okay? They will not see the admin link. That is only for any of your admins. Oh, and that's a good point. If you want to add additional admins, you certainly can. You can manage your members here. If you want to make any of your players a, like an administrator to help you, all you have to do is edit that player and click on is admin and save those changes. So um, I'm glad I thought about that. I didn't mention that in the first round of admin features. So that's how you, you can have multiple admins on in your tennis club okay i'm gonna jump back over to the player dashboard let me uh show you a, a little bit about some of the player dashboard features okay so um, what you see as a player on the left side you're, you're all in any ladders that you're that you're currently signed up for okay so any ladders that i'm signed up for you can say i'm in men's singles and I'm in mixed doubles, okay? Over in the middle of the screen is um, your challenges and some of this stuff will start populating in a minute when I actually start showing um, start showing some things that, um, that involve me as a player. So you can see all of my challenges will show up here under my challenges. Any recent matches I played will show here. All of the club matches will show here and any pending challenges, basically all the matches waiting to be played will be here under pending challenges. So let me first show you what the regular bump flow flow looks like. So if I go out to men's singles and I click, I can do it one of two ways. I can click issue challenge um, or I can click the men's single and it's going to take me to my screen where I see all the ladders and the eligible people that I can challenge. So remember when we set this up, we could we could challenge three spots up. So here I am at number six. So James, Rod, and Jimmy are all available for me to challenge, okay? Um, so I'm gonna make a challenge to Jimmy. So if I go out to Jimmy and click issue challenge, I'm gonna get a message that says, are you sure you wish to challenge Jimmy? And I'm gonna, and it's gonna, and I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, okay? So now it's gonna take me back to the dashboard and as you can see, uh, I now have a, a, a challenge out to Jimmy um, and it's in a pending state and it forfeits on three days from now at 12.06 p.m. So what this means is Jimmy has three days to accept this match or I'm automatically going to get the win and move up. You can see that I have a uh, contacts details a little link that will show Jimmy's information so if I need to get a hold of him and then I can, if Jimmy uh, is, you know, for any reason, if I want to withdraw that challenge, then I can simply uh, just click withdraw and it would um, that challenge would be withdrawn. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to actually take you in to Jimmy's dashboard so I can show you what it looks like when a player gets challenged. So just uh, I'm going to pause for one second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back now and now I am logged in as Jimmy. So now if you notice under my challenges, 
I see that here is my here here's where Tim challenged me. It's in a pending state, and I can have two options. I can deny the challenge or accept the challenge. Okay. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and accept this. So I'm going to go in and it it's mindful to know that um, on the mobile app and in an email that Jimmy got notified that Tim challenged him. So he can also accept from the email and he can also use his mobile app to um, accept. And I want to show you the mobile app in a separate video on the player side, but I just wanted to show you what the user would experience and how they would do it on the website if they uh, indeed were using it from here. So now I'm just going to click this accept button. It's going to give me a confirmation and I'm going to click OK. Challenge accepted. So now I can see that it's in an accepted state. And now what's going to happen is both um, my, both Tim and um, uh, Jimmy is, are going to see the report score button. Okay. So now I can go in and I can see um, that here's the pending challenges are, that's got me and Jimmy in it. Here's the Andy and Pete that the admin entered. But I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and report score. So I'm gonna go ahead and we played this match and I now I wanna go ahead and report the score. So all I have to do is come in here, click the re report score button. Any player can do it, either Jimmy or Tim, it doesn't matter because you're gonna select the winner. So we're gonna go ahead and say that um, Jimmy, I mean, uh, Tim won this challenge. So I'm gonna select, select Tim as the winner. And I'm gonna say he won six, four. Um, and then I'm gonna add a set and say, uh-oh, I'm gonna mess up on purpose, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna pick the status that, you know, and most of the time playthrough will be what you want. So I'm gonna submit this. What's gonna do is it's gonna give me the messaging because what we've done is we have basically added validation rules so that the score can't be entered if it's in an invalid state. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and correct this and make it be 6464. Okay? Now the TBO, that would be if you added a tiebreaker only set. So if I wanted to say that I lost in the second set 64, but then we played a third set tiebreaker, I would click this box and then I could go ahead and enter my 10 break or 10 point tiebreaker score and let's say call that 10 7. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and submit the scorecard now. All right, and then I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. Okay, now you can see that that challenge is gone. Okay, and you can see that Jimmy, since I'm logged in as Jimmy, I'm now 0 and 1. Okay, if I go to my recent matches, it's gonna show that I lost to Tim and the result of that cost me to move down the ladder. That's what the red arrow is representing here, okay? And now if I click on Demo Club Matches, I can also see from a club standpoint all the matches, and I can see that Tim successfully defeated Jimmy, which resulted in Tim moving up. And so now if I go out and look at the ladder, I can see that Tim has moved up to the three spot, and Jimmy moved down to the four spot and I show an up and down movement color to represent the movement of the challenge, okay? All right, um, something that's uh, else I can point out here, if you notice, I'm logged in as Jimmy. I now have on my three spots, I get this, why can't I challenge this team? So the system, since we have rules built in where a person can't have more than one challenge out, it will tell the system, hey, um, you recently challenged this player, you must wait seven days, or maybe this one, this team is already involved in the challenge and can't accept the challenge at the moment. So the reasoning behind why you can't be challenged is um, discoverable if you just hover over this question. And so that leaves Andy as my only valid challenge in this ladder. Okay? So that's all there is to bump base ladders as far as from the player side. So. You know, they, it's as easy as issuing a challenge, accepting a challenge, reporting the score. That's it. The ladder will take care of itself. Everybody is happy. It's fun. Um, and your members are going to love it. Okay. Um, one of the things to point out here that you can also do as a player is you can view the rules at any time. Um, you can actually drop from the ladder if you like. I'm not going to do that. And you can even temporarily leave the ladder if you uh, if you like. Again, not going to do any of that. Okay. 
Now what I want to show you is how a activity-based ladder is just set up a little bit different. So if I go here uh, on this activity-based ladder, you're going to see some subtle differences. If you notice, there is no issue challenge button, okay? Because here we propose matches. We don't directly challenge anybody. And this is a doubles, this is a doubles ladder. Even though players are listed individually, it's still set up as a doubles ladder. And this is one that's very popular because one of the biggest things about doubles is scheduling. It's so hard to schedule four people. But if you have somebody on a big ladder saying, I want to play Saturday at eight o'clock, then the people that can play Saturday can come in and accept the spots. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I click Propose Match here, then what I'm going to get is this screen that's going to allow me to go ahead and select the date. So I'm going to say, I want to play Sunday morning um, at, let's say, 9 o'clock in the morning. And I know that my partner is Pete. Okay? Notice here, I can fill out as many of these slots as I like. Okay? And the, and, and the great, great thing is, you may have a group of four that wants to play but one of the guys can't play that week so you may go ahead and say tim pete and you know or jimmy and pete and andy want to play they just need one other person to come in and accept this match so you can fill out as many slots as you want as a player or as none so you may be new to the club and you may not know anybody just but you want to throw a match out there in doubles and and get people to accept it okay so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do an open proposal. And this works the same way if this was a singles. Now, if this was a singles um, activity ladder, you wouldn't have these three options. All you would have is a date and a time because it's singles. But with doubles, you're allowed these different slots. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and propose this match. And, um, and I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and propose this. All right. And so the next screen is just a verification saying hey you're going to play uh on uh, 6 23 at 9 a.m and then you got three open slots that need to be accepted okay so i'm gonna go ahead and propose this match accept the confirmation and now i've submitted that proposal okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to log back in um under somebody else and show you what it looks like from that side so just hang tight for just a second Okay, so I am back and I'm logged in under the Tim Owens account. Um, and you notice now I have a open proposals tab. And so if I click on that, I can see, wow, there's a new match. It's in this ladder and it, they're wanting to play at 623 at 9 a.m. And so, um, and I can also see who did the match. So if I wanna see a little, if I'm interested in that match, all I have to do is come in and click accept and then I can accept any of the open spots that are available so I can select to be Jimmy's partner or I can select to be one of his opponents so if I select to be one of his opponents all I have to do is select accept spot hit OK and now I am in that match and my opponents are to be determined and if I click details I can come in at any time to see who has accepted that match. And the great thing about the system is the system will only send an email out once those other two spots are open or once those other two spots are, are, are taken, it will send an email out to everybody on the ladder and say, all right, you got your match. Uh, see you on the court at whatever time that match was proposed. And so this is just a great way for people just to constantly um, uh, select and play in matches and propose matches and report scores um, and it makes it a lot more fun and social. I'm going to pause one more time. I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of that match out with um, with some other people so I can show you what the points allocation looks like once you actually submit one of those matches. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back on a player dashboard. I'm logged in as James Blake and um, as you can see I've accepted to be Andy's partner in a match against Jimmy and Tim. So now all four slots um, are taken. There's no more pending proposals. And now we see that this match was accepted and we even see that this match is scheduled to be played on the date that it was originally proposed on. So now any four of these players, once this match is over with, can come in and click on report score. So I'm gonna do that now. 
And I'm going to go ahead and say that the winners was Jimmy and Tim. And I'm going to say they won 6-2. Uh, played a really good match. Uh, let's say 5-7. And then we're going to add one more set and say 7-6. Uh, and a really close tiebreaker. All right. I'm going to submit that scorecard. Okay. Now what's going to happen is if I go back and look at the mixed doubles uh, standings now, I can see now I have points. Jimmy and Tim, based on the points and the way the match results panned out, they got 11 points for that win. And James and Andy got some points for playing in that match and playing a real close match and taking it to three sets. So even though James and Andy lost, they still received their points for some achievements that they made during that match. And so as you can see, the more you play, the more you win, the more individually you're gonna rank up in this ladder. And this is a really cool way to see, um, you know, even though it's a doubles ladder, it's uh, great and very flexible at getting people to play doubles, which is really good for certain clubs, okay? So that's, <clears throat> I'm gonna conclude this video here we got some more videos coming. I want to do another one on just the mobile app, but that should give you a very good overview on how to um, create your account, how to add your players to, um, to your account, how to create your ladder, the different types of ladders we run, how to um, create and uh, challenges and reset and delete challenges and how to uh, get your players and how players issue challenges and report scores so that's a really good overview this product is very good and it's very simple uh, feel free uh, to check out our uh, again up in the top right um, the live support link the the knowledge base and of course if you if you need us please reach out we're always willing to help and so I hope you have fun I hope you enjoy tennis ladders and I uh, really hope that um, you guys have fun out on the courts. Until next time, see you later.